Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh, thanks for joining me. Uh, today we're talking about Kevin Frankie's second interview. I haven't heard it yet, I'm gonna blind react to it. There is so much content that's that came from this big, big giant dump and we're talking about conversations between Ruby and her sisters that we're gonna have to go over, we're gonna talk about everything. I'm, I have to cover everything, I wanna make sure it's documented on my channel and it stays here forever. Okay, because this is crazy. I just watched the 2020 11 minute thing on YouTube and it's just, it made me cry. I mean, this whole thing has been hitting me pretty hard and I'm not trying to make this about me. I hate that when people do that. But as a kid who was abused, uh, this hits ch people like me and people like you out there who have been abused probably a lot harder than others. Um, it really, really, really is crazy. And I, uh, YouTube removed my content about the uh, Ruby saying it was exaggerated and uh, just because of, that's how graphic it was. Literally, YouTube's like, we can't put this on the internet. It's too graphic, right? So that's how bad this is and she thinks we're exaggerating it. And so we're going to continue to cover this because obviously my battle here is against people who do this to children. And this all started with eight passengers being a family vlog, which I've had obviously red flags about since day one. I mean, the first video I think I ever did was with my son Tyson talking with eight passengers. And um, it was a, like when that video hit, it was actually, it was, that, it was during the Micah era and it got a tons of views. And what that tells me is that this is a very, very important topic to people. And there's a lot of people kind of like, what is going on with this stuff? So that's why I talk about it. And so the second interview with Kevin apparently is going to shed some more light on the Ruby situation of her inklings of what's in here, which is why I'm pretty interested to hear it. So let's, uh, there's no video, it's just audio. So we'll just, uh, we'll make it work. How's that work? Okay, so let's get to it. All right, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. So after this interview that just dropped yesterday, uh, Kevin is in there asking questions like, what's emaciated mean? Like, he's a, he's gross. Like, I understand he didn't know what was going on, but I, I really, really have a hard time believing that. He knows what his wife's capable of because he's seen it. He knows what Jody's capable of because he's seen it, and he said he trusted them both. Now, likely that opinion has changed since he's seen the photos, since maybe, I don't even know if he's been able to talk to his children. I hope not. I hope he never gets to see his children ever again. I don't think he deserves it. I think he deserves to be in prison um, because no good man, especially a man who considers himself a man of faith, should ever have allowed this to happen to his children. Okay, he's the man of the house. If you believe what Mormons believe, you believe in the patriarchy. Okay, and the patriarchy states that the man is the spiritual and head of the household in every way. And that was totally not the case here. And so we're going to see this and we're going to look into it and trigger warning. I'm sure they talk about some craziness, but uh, this whole case is a trigger warning. Also, we have to remember that in the first interview, Kevin barely asked about his children at all. How are they doing? Are they okay? Just basically just shut down and then said, I trust Ruby, I trust Jody. And then we know at the, at the call afterwards, it was more about the money, didn't ask about his kids. What did you do to my kids? What did Jody do to my kids? Even you'd have some plausible deniability to say, what did you let Jody do to our kids, right? At that point, you could even have said, I still trust you, but what happened? He didn't even ask. That's the craziest thing. And I don't think there is a conversation here where he did ask. Ruby about this at all. I think he cut, I think I've heard inklings that he cut off communication after three days after finding out and then he just didn't. And obviously he's filed for divorce since. Um, but at the same time at that first period, like it's like, grow some balls, dude. Why did it take him so long? And why did it take it for his wife to go to prison for him to grow some balls about being a real, a dad, right? It's craziness. Oh, these people. So meanwhile, this is all going down and Bonnie knows that she is the same type of person as sister. She knows she's going, but this is what she posted today. Right, about a few minutes ago, how I got scammed. <laughs> like she just, uh, thank God her views are down and people should be disliking the crap out of this stuff. Um, but terrible, terrible person. That she just like her, her whole family's falling apart and collapsing, and she has a part of this. Sorry, she does. Uh, just like Kevin didn't do anything, these people didn't do anything. And you know how we know that they probably didn't do anything? Um, because I don't hear any police calls from Bonnie or Julie or the grandparents. I don't hear any of those calls on file. Do you guys hear any of those? So if Bonnie sits out here and says, we did everything we could, what did you do? What do you mean everything you could? Because if you did everything you could, there would have been a lot more probably documentation of it, specifically if this was related to this case. Wouldn't that have been released? I don't know. What I'm telling you is they didn't do everything they could, and now they're just like trying to live their life and continue on their YouTube journey and make millions of dollars, which they're not. They're completely dead. I'm, I should do a video just based on what has happened to their channels after this, but yeah, they can get wrecked. Anyway, here we go. Thank you for meeting us. Were you there the first? 
I was there. I don't think I interviewed with you. Okay. Lieutenant Studley was Lieutenant Studley with time. me the first time. Studley. I don't so. remember a lot. So. Yeah. Okay. I don't blame you. It's a lot all at once. And Usually, long time no see is a good thing when you're dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's laugh and joke. Just get to the interview. This guy did not see his kids for 13 months. Meanwhile, two of them were being completely almost obliterated. Okay. There's no other way. I can't say the T word because keep getting tagged for it. But like, like you don't get to be all chummy chummy with a guy who did this. Yeah, but I know that both of my kids have mentioned both of you and my with you. And uh, it's a good kid. Do you guys by chance have a card? I, I do in the car, okay. but not, not okay. mine. So I'll grab that for you though. Blah, blah, blah. So like I talked to Mr. Fester about, I just want this to be totally ran by you. Uh, Ran, not ruined. This thing's trying hard to read it. Uh, I won't ask you any questions that are incriminating. We're not looking at you as a suspect or anything like that. Should be. We just are more curious of the dynamic and Jody coming into your relationship, your lives. So if you kind of just want to walk us through that on how she came into your lives and then where things started to change. Jody, you mean? Jody. Er, Jody. Jody. I you said Julie, but... Oh. Okay. You know what she meant, butthole. Jody. Jody. Yeah, Jody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. Well, I guess he does have a sister-in-law named Julie. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask first, have you found the pen papers? The pen papers. So... What the heck are the pen He means the journals, right? We found quite a bit of they're, different uh, journals. We believe they're on the, the computer, and the rest of them are unsealed. Like they're trying to mail them off. Mail them off? We do not have a direct copy of it, no. Because my understanding was we had purchased as a Christmas present for Jody in 2021 a leather, like a leather folder that, you know, three inches thick or whatever, and it had engraved on the leather on the outside the pen papers, and Ruby wrote detailed notes of everything. All so this guy at this point has read the journals of ruby and he's sitting here i think this is probably why he agreed to this he's like okay yeah she's evil and i have nothing to lose at this point he probably is now done with her which is fine good for him <laughs> that doesn't negate anything else though all interactions with jody and pam botcher from august 2021 until i don't know when but and you're saying so he's like a satchel looking or is it more like a binder? He just told you it was a three inch binder. No, well, no, it's like I, I don't know what to call it, it but it's it's flat. You it's, it well, yeah, it's, it's, so here's it's, what it is just short because we do have Ruby's journal, which is from those days that you mentioned. These, these things are there. going to be so she wouldn't write the stuff she wrote in the pen paper, she would not write in her journal. The stuff she wrote in the pen papers was not intended to be read by anybody until God would decree them to be written as scripture for the whole world to read. For people, not me. So J Ruby's honestly thinking that she's some kind of like big up, big deal in the Mormon church. And she's like, look, I'm doing this because I feel, I feel like this is the holy thing to do. And this is it. Ruby was doing this under the guise of the Mormon, of Joseph Smith's teaching, of the Mormon teaching, of the Bible's teaching, if she believes what the Bible says. I don't know. That's not anywhere in the Bible, by the way. But this, I'm, I, that's why I'm blaming this basically on the LDS church, because this has nothing to do with Christianity. Now, there are Christians out there who are fundamentalists who would probably believe that you should, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child type of thing. But this is a, this is an LDS thing, because if you look at Lori Vallow and the comparisons in the cases, it's, it's quite crazy. The LDS is a cult. I don't care what anybody says. I know that a lot of people here watch me are Mormon and they get upset when I say that. It's a cult, guys. You are in a cult started by a dude who mashed up a bunch of religions together and you believe him f with no proof or evidence. And I, I, a lot of people say that about the Bible, too, right? Um, but there's no proof that uh, that any of this exists. It's just one dude stuck his head in a hat full of rocks and said, this is what it says, right? And he was a pedo, by the way, which is your whole... That's Any religion where your leader or the person who founded it is a pedo should be just, bye! You know what I'm saying? So anyway, all that to say is that the, the, she, Ruby honestly thinks that this is going to be taken into scripture and written and written, written out by the men in the LDS church as, like, uh, as a way to do life as Mormons. That says a lot. 
I believe that's what we have. Because okay. you're saying the pen would be different, correct? Like a well, it was just in the thing called the pen papers. So it was, and and that's how Ruby referred to those papers. So they described all of the visions and trances and everything that Jody. And we're gonna do a video on these pen papers. We're absolutely gonna read them. And Ruby went into. How thick would you say it was? It was like three inches thick or so, and there were hundreds of pages of written. Written documents that Ruby had. <coughs> and that was given to Jody in 2022 when she you said you left could. and returned to her home in January. So this is similar. Yeah, like it would look like that. Okay. That's not the journal that we have, so. No, I think you're talking. It looks like a side journal. It's something Jody would yeah. not want found. Yeah. But she wouldn't want to destroy it. Because we we from didn't find that in the home. From empty we did find an empty one. I so. remember saying that a lot Jody burned them shits. So there's likely other documentation, written documentation out there that she got rid of. I don't think she burned it. Again, Jody believes what she's doing here. She believes wholeheartedly in the whatever, the thing that she's doing for God or Joseph Smith. She knows. And so that's likely put somewhere in a trust somewhere that she trusted with people. Because they still, there's people, like imagine seeing what these people have done and then having support from anybody. You should be completely cut off from your community at all. I don't care if they're your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. I don't care. Once it has come out what you did and we can see it with our eyes and you wrote it down like you're proud of it and like basically said you're about to kill your children. Because remember, she said in the journal, we'll go over that. She's like, her son asked, when are we going home? And she's like, she didn't answer him, but she said, we're not. We're never going home. They're going to take him into the wilderness and just leave him there. Remember that? So Julie and Bonnie and the grandparents, all these people standing by Ruby right now, how dare you? Because those kids are your blood too. So how dare you? They don't, they don't, they don't get anything anymore. That's it. You're done. Do you if the right. empty one says the pen papers on the outside of it, then they empty it. I don't think it's like that. We'll go back through our photos and see if that's because yeah. everything in the if, home was photographed. So. If you're interested in Pam Botcher, mm -hmm. that's going to tie Pam Botcher to all of it. Who the hell is Pam Botcher? That's the first time I've ever heard of this name. Who is Pam Botcher? Okay. What's in those documents? What? Okay, so. Um, Can I just interrupt you? I'm sorry. Sure. Can then they blanket. Is it okay to bring the puppies? Yes, we want the puppies, right? Okay. Okay, so why don't you finish here and then what? You call me when you're done? Why are there puppies? Okay. Can we do the bailiff and the warden here so she can give us a copy of the warden? Okay, let me see if I can find them. Okay, thank you. Um, in 20. In 2018. We were sight. They blank it out. And that's going to be hard to find in today's world. Um, good luck. Ruby had uh, a very close friend named Paige Hannah, who lives in Mapleton, who was um, a massive <laughs> fan of Connections and Joey Hildebrand. Um, in fact, the Hannahs are on the cover of their book. This, this, this wormhole keeps getting deeper. And so um, Ruby started to speak with Jody towards the end of 2018, early 2019, with the um, intention of having her be the therapist. The therapist something, something, something. To Jody. Um, Jody always had a larger interest in... Um, communicating with the parents more than with the actual patient, which I always found curious. Don't let him get away with this either, which I always found curious. Did you? Because you went along with this. You were a keynote speaker. You you found curious, did you? But you didn't have a problem. Um, but her theory was, if, if you want to help your child, you have to help yourself first, and then you'll know how to help the child. So she spoke with Ruby frequently and the frequency of their communications um, ramped up. And then the first conversation that Jody had with Chad was in June of 2019 while we were on a, a trip to the East Coast. 
Okay, so they let their son alone with this woman. While they left, Jody got in there and said, Can you going to talk to Jody while we're gone on this trip? All of her visits, which virtual through Zoom. Um, but she would talk with Ruby on the phone or through Zoom quite frequently. Um, so Jody met with... Met with something, something. Things got really... It, it got strange around the... fall of 2020 the Hannahs were trying to convince and bring Ruby into thank you into this um, organization called Connections and um, that particularly were focused on things like lust versus love and, and healthy marriages and happier marriages happier relationships how can you take advice from a person who literally lives in like a giant compound without their family and everybody hates them? Are you going to trust someone like that? Are you kidding me right now? Someone who doesn't have a healthy relationship, happy marriage, any of that, you're just going to trust them? Like, I don't understand. If you, if you are a therapist trying to give love advice and you are shit at love, please don't. Okay? How about that? Um, she invited me to go to a... It was like a conference or something held at Thanksgiving Point um, in Lehigh. There were like 100 people there, and that was in the fall of 2019, um, maybe late summer of 2019, late summer, late summer 2019. And my impression at that time was this is, this is absolute craziness. This is, yeah, but you still did it. It's a bunch of man-hating Women, men hating women, not men and women. So this thing's getting it wrong. But men and men hating women that are just looking for excuses to you know, tear down their husbands, and I mean that's what it felt like to me when I was in there. Um, it, but it did. It was confusing because there were people that I respected a lot that were up on the stage with microphones. And you did too. And you know giving testimonials of how great this was and how it changed their lives and their marriage and like the Hannahs were among them, you know? And, and, and so, yeah, it was confusing. Um, oh my we, God, just talk faster! We, then we went on a trip with the Hannahs to the UK in October of 2019. Really? I swear the whole objective of the trip was to like convince me to get into connections because all of them were in it except me and and but you know they made some really eloquent arguments and then I agreed to join a men's group with Jody in January of 2020. Men's group with Jody who's not a man. And I would do it for three months. So I started that men's group in 2020, and you know the group. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been like a, an addiction recovery group. Addiction recovery. That's what, what it was. That's what it felt like. I mean, there were probably 10 men in there. It was on Zoom. All of them were like working through, you know, various stages of like sex addiction, porn addiction, um, drug addiction. And let's be real, when it comes to the Mormon church, porn and sex addiction is just like wanting sex. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I think I read somewhere that Ruby got upset with, maybe it's in this conversation, but Ruby got really upset with him because he wanted her to wear lingerie once. And she's like, oh, you're just completely addicted to pornography. Like, let's be real. The Mormon church views sex as like a procreation tool, and that's kind of it. Right? It's the way it is. It's patriarchy. Yet men are supposed to have multiple wives. And, and, and it was just... Uh... It was like a 12-step group, but intended just for general, like, addiction recovery. And, and I really was like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, I don't belong here. You admitted, though, you were addicted to corn, according to Ruby, so you did belong there. But everyone was like, no, come here. Like, you can learn to have a better, like, life and a better marriage. And so I, I thought, okay, whatever. Don't um, believe me. I went through my, my three, you know, obligatory three months, and I was ready to leave and then um, I got challenged to. Oh, thank you. And then 
I got I got challenged to have, sit down and have a vulnerable conversation with my wife and ask her how my lustful choices have affected lustful not last four <laughs> her. and you know to me that was like a loaded question I thought uh, you know I still didn't see what I had done or anything that would constitute any form of also you should lust after your wife can we be real I know that they're like lust and love is different ah, it goes hand in hand you should lust after your spouse you shouldn't lust you should desire them this is the so. This is the part of the Mormon Church. It's like, why would women ever go to a church like this? I mean, your husband is required to just not to not like really, really want after you. Like, are you kidding me? You should lust for your wife. I know lust is a is a dirty word inside the Christian community, but lust your lust your spouse. Okay, I give you permission if you're looking for it. Form of like, you know, abuse or, or anything like that. And, um... But I did, I, I took the challenge and I sat down and for two hours, Ruby very emotionally just shared how she felt in our marriage and how the things that I, um, over 20 years of marriage, you know, asking for sex as a husband frequently or oh, here it is. <laughs> asking her to wear lingerie or things like that, how that made her feel. This is why you don't, like Christians, Mormons, everybody out there, don't rush into marriage. All right? It's really not worth it. Really find out your partner. Especially, like, I think that Christian Bible colleges should do this because of where most people go to get married. Christians in general, anybody who's in a type of Christian religion, Mormons included, okay? Start having conversations with your kids about sexual compatibility. Okay? You know, I'm a bit of a prude. That's just the way I grew up. But, but like, I'm just saying, you should really, 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 really talk to your kids about this stuff. Christians will not talk to their children about this stuff. They think it's like a dirty word. You don't want to talk about sex ever. But in the context of the way you, if you want your kid to wait for marriage and stuff, and that's something you want for your kid, okay, fine. You can talk about that, but also still have the conversation about sexual compatibility because clearly they are not compatible. And that's, that, God intended it for, for that to be a beautiful, awesome thing inside of a marriage. It's not just for procreation. It is a way to express love. You should lust your wife, I'm telling you. And so if you're not, if you, if you don't have a conversation early on, especially these Christians, I've known so many who've gotten married, by the way, okay, and don't have these conversations. There's, a, there's like an old wives tale amongst our friends out here. Um, there was a guy who got married and his wife didn't even have sex with him for like an entire year or something like that. Just didn't want to. Like, not, didn't consummate the marriage for a year. I'm not even sure, I'm, I'm sure they, their marriage didn't last, obviously. But if you're not having conversations, and I know this is going off into a tangent, um, have, teach your children to have conversations about this stuff, okay? If you're not sexually compatible, do not get married, okay? It's going to lead to divorce. It was really emotional, and it touched me. Like, I, I didn't realize that she felt so strongly about that, that she felt so hurt by that. And so I committed that I would really give it a go and I, I don't like that you want me to look sexy for you well <laughs> that's why the corn probably i stayed in the men's group and so you know in that men's group i met with jody every week um with the other men that were in the group and and um then it got weird then it got weird because like our our marriage felt like it was getting better and stronger so this was now you know summer why did that feel weird because of fall of 2020 and then in addition to that there was the whole youtube cancel thing i don't know how much you guys are even interested or aware i'm of interested that. in that in may of 2020 some um videos that ruby released on the, uh, that dealt with chad just blew up in her face and it was all over the news and hundreds of thousands of tiktokers and all this stuff were just piling on and basically burned down like our youtube channel and overnight like the income went you know we lost 90 percent of the income overnight this is a really really interesting paragraph okay focus on this when people are outraged about something he just admitted to you that YouTubers will never admit to you. We lost like 90% of the income overnight. It basically burned down our channel because of what she was doing. Now, who else is doing stuff like this? Dockety Dozen, Ren from Jacqueline and Ren. 
Garza crew, these people are doing this stuff and they should be canceled. And they are, obviously they're losing money. I remember even just a year ago, Dr. Who doesn't, what is that? This was at its peak, maybe a little more than a year ago, making hundreds of thousands of money. That was like a, a shell of the former channel. This is what happens. Okay. They put all their eggs in this basket, but this is a, this is a very, very, very positive thing for me. This means that what we do can have an impact and it can work. If these parents can't make any money exploiting their children, they will stop doing it. They're not doing it for fun. They're doing it for money. Okay. And that's all they do for. And they don't care about the safety of children because the money matters more. And so when the money stops, the exploitation stops. Isn't that crazy? That's a really, really positive thing he just said there that he, no one would admit to you. And, uh, that was hard. <coughs> was this like the, what, which episode was this? Was this the one where they talked about like the bean bag? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Bean bag and chair. And then they started going back and trying to dig and find, and, and they find these little nuggets like, oh, look. They, little nuggets. Eve went to school without a lunch one day. Like he, look how he's just playing this off. Like, oh, look, you just want to lose. Like there's, there's a pattern of abuse. They need to go back and look for nuggets. We found a treasure trove of abuse that I've been covering since day one, by the way, treasure trove of abuse, not a little nugget here and there. You abused your children 100%. And he's like, oh, and he's just all being aloof about it. Like, oh, they just, you know, just doing YouTube thing. thing, thing, thing. Oh man, look what happened in the end. You don't get to just be passe about this. Stuff like that. But it was the beat back video that Good. really set people off. So, really so I hope Chad knew what he was doing when he did that, and he really just unloaded, and I think he did that on purpose, and I'm glad, I think he's glad he did it. Went back from there. Mm -hmm. So at that time, Ruby was really distraught. Oh, no, and your YouTube channel. She was looking for support. She was looking for someone who would understand her. She was looking for confirmation bias. She was looking for people to say, you know, you're right. And this is what happened in the calls. And we'll cover them all. She was getting this in the calls even after she's in prison for doing what she did to children. And they're still getting people saying, no, you're being attacked. It's the devil. Who, who would validate her. And she found that in Jody. Jody, all, all the stuff she did with Chad. Was because of Jody. Was because of Jody. And so she, it makes sense that she would go to Jody for emotional support when she felt like her world was burning down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the person that caused our world to burn down, I'm going to go to her for more advice. Um, in the meantime, like our, I felt like our marriage was, was getting stronger. It, it felt better. Like we, we didn't fight as much. And, um, even though we were having less sex, it, it felt more connecting. And, and it was just... I thought, wow, this is great. Like, I think Ruby was just trying to tell you that she just is done. And I think there's in some marriages, this kind of happens. I don't, again, that's why you should probably really, really find out if your partner is asexual or not really into that stuff, right? Because there are some people who go the rest of their life without it. And you should probably find that out because if that's important to you, that's a deal breaker, right? And it should be a deal breaker. That's just the way it is. Everybody has their gives and wants and takes, but you should be sexually compatible in a marriage. Again, and just people who are interested in this, some people who are not, and they are meant for each other. But this is it. Like he's just even like, even though we weren't doing it anymore, <laughs> it honestly just sounded like she was like, Jody had her hands in early and saying, you know, stop doing that. Stop having sex with her husband. You know, this, this is great. I was happy to be the guy up on the stage. You know, that started sometime in like... Uh -huh. So, like, listen to everything you said before. I was getting sussed out. I didn't like it. Blah, blah, blah. This and I wanted to leave. And then all of a sudden, this guy's on stage giving keynotes. 2020, for the fall of 2020, there would be a conference. And Ruby would say, I thought we were just attending it. But then she'd say, hey, they, they wanted us to get up and tell our story. You know? <laughs> I, wanted I wanted my wife to be sexy. And then she got off everything oh, okay sure so i get up and, and and just say like yeah i was the guy who said i think this is a bunch of like you know man hating you know women but it is it really has made a difference in my marriage and, and i it, it really did the difference it had in his marriage is that they stopped arguing and then stopped having sex <laughs> so, is that a good difference like i believe it and so those conferences and stuff, everything continued like that until March of 2021, when after a conference, that, um, a connections conference. That I, I guess I have to skip some of the stuff. So basically it says after the conference, uh, all the people who are being trained as, you know, mental fitness coaches and stuff. 
I got to skip it. So I can't. that was Ruby and a bunch of other people and their spouses. We went out to like a dinner afterwards, and, and that's where Jody really opened up to the women in a private conversation that she believed she was being tormented and haunted by shadow figures every night. That's your demons. You are being tormented by your thoughts, because clearly Jody is an unwell person who has who's a psychopath. Obviously, I mean, there's just there's no debating that she's a psychopath. Okay, and that's just maybe she's got like multiple personality disorders. Maybe she's got like some craziness. Maybe bipolar. A lot of those people who and I've met people and have had people close to me in my life who have had these these things, and a lot of them believe that they like they're haunted by demons. A lot of Christians and fundamentalists will believe that, you know, mental health issues and that stuff is a demon living in you. And let's let me let me just can I just say this? It's not. Yeah, it's not. And I don't know exactly what happened, but the Hannah's do. I need to hear about these Hannah's. All I know is at some point within a couple days of that in, in that month of March they the Hannah's drove down from Mapleton and picked Jody up and brought her back to their home in Mapleton and she lived for six weeks in that home in Mapleton and this is where like I don't know what happened but I do know that there's two different sides how much you want to bet the Hannah's are divorced the stories they tried to introduce her to a new cult lady cult lady not cult lady that the hannahs were getting into so they wanted to merge their cults into one apparently and again let him say all the stuff he wants now but up until the p point where he was in the police the first he trusted jody up until that moment so he wasn't like on his way out at that point he was still fully bought and sold into the stuff so yeah don't forget that um, they referred to it as a cult at the time oh no no, no one in a cult says I'm a cult. Yeah, Mormons. <laughs> but from your perspective, it looks like two cult leaders merging together. From where I stand now, absolutely. Uh, I don't know what they're saying. They're basically like, um, whatever. According to Jody, she was held against her will for six weeks and was kidnapped, and she escaped. Mm. Mm hmm. That makes sense. We don't believe you, considering what happened. And got out. According to the Hannahs, after six weeks of Jody stabbing herself with forks and knives, cutting herself and um, wanting to commit suicide and trying to seduce the husband of the family, they kicked her out. Hmm. This is crazy. This is crazy. I don't know what's the truth of the record. Maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. But the point is, uh, somewhere around mid-April, Jody was back in her home in Ivan's, and she was a hot mess. And she reached out to Ruby for help. And Ruby, Ruby was always jealous of the Hannahs that they had a better relationship with Jody than she did. You've all seen Jody, right? I'm not the only person that has seen her, right? What in the fresh hell would you want to be a friend with a crazy lady like that for? What? Look the power this woman has. Likely because of the bishop power she had through the LDS church too and the people that she knew and the connections she had. That's likely why. This woman was clearly connected. Ruby, and this is like goes back to her childhood. She wanted to be the best friend. She wanted to be the most liked. She mm -hmm. wanted to be the, the one that everybody knew. And, and then started a YouTube channel and exploited her children to get there. And became that, by the way. Of all the Griffiths channels, of all the kids, hers was the most popular. The most, by far, most popular. Even though it was Comic Sans in the logo. And so it hurt her that she felt like she was being excluded from what was going on at the Hannah's house. And then she'd say, why are so many secrets? And the Hannah's would say, it's not secret, it's sacred. Oh, yeah. And when the time's right, you can know, too. You know? Somebody investigate the Hannah's, please. Um, because they're likely still in this cult, and that cult needs to be called out. 
so we went down to Jody's house in May of 2021. That was the first time I had ever been there. And it blew my mind, as you, I'm sure you have walked in there and gone, how does a therapist look like this? Like, 10,000 square foot mansion. This it didn't make sense to me. But we were there, and she opened up and talked about, you know, her struggles and, and what was going on. And I gotta say, like, I'm a smart guy. I'm an engineer. I've designed and helped build some really big stuff. I've been a college professor. Okay. I, can't, I have many leather-bound books. I can't explain some of the stuff that happened while we were there. Like crashes in, in the basement while we were talking upstairs. Did she happen to have maybe other victims down there? Did you think of that post this? What do you think he's saying? Is there's, there's ghosts and stuff like that? And, uh, okay. And plates, like, in the kitchen just flying off by themselves like full speed smashing on the wall and, and falling through the floor like, by themselves I, I I can't explain it but I saw it with my own eyes and, and I don't have any way to explain it other than there. maybe Jody was making something happen There's some crazy like she's crazy clearly maybe she figured out a way to make this happen crazy shit going on no such thing as ghosts, everybody. Demons, yes. Ruby was convinced that we could intervene and help Jody. I didn't want to do it. Paper plates? And I tried to. I get the bishop involved and say, hey, go to like the priesthood and the church and all that stuff. Just go to your support network. But Ruby continued to be like, no, we can help. Like, she doesn't want that. Could you imagine, like, what would happen to her reputation if this got out? And so, let's help her. So we, we went down, like, a couple more times between May and August. But it reached the point where in August, her bishop at the time, a guy named, who's down there in Cayenta, named um, Scott Galbraith, He's not our bishop anymore, but I mean, he was going over there like every night and he'd be there for like four hours and just, and he'd be like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting evil spirits. I'm casting demons out. Yeah. Bishops don't do that stuff. It's not okay. I'm, whatever. Crazy stuff going on. And finally he got to the point where he's like, I can't do this. Why would demons be haunting Jody? Jody's a demon herself. She's the one who per perpetuated so much insanity and sinful behavior. The demon just, is she going to, is this what's going to happen? Is she going to force the, or is she going to claim that demons forced her to do all this stuff? Cause no. And we talked about this before as a Christian, people who claim to be Christians and the theology of it all, demons cannot force you to do things. You still have to make choices. You have free will. So I don't, don't ever let a Christian especially a Mormon or any Christian for that matter, any of them ever tell you that's the devil attacking me. It's this and that and the other thing. And it's the devil because what they're doing is laying blame on the devil and not their choices that they make. Cause you can make a choice every single time. Even if that choice is asking God to protect you from demons. Okay. You can, Christians do this all the time. They, they fall into sin and then they blame the devil. You can't let it happen anymore. You got to stop. Like, there needs to be some sort of resolution. It was at that point that they said, why don't you take her up to your house? No, thanks. Nope. And I was like, oh, hell no. I don't want this in my house. But it, I was beaten over the head with it. Like, that's really insensitive. You know, she's <laughs> I don't give a shit if it's really insensitive. I want no demons in my house. That's so much stuff. Yeah, no, I'm living with one who doesn't want to wear lingerie. Of our family. And, and you're, you're being selfish and and she has needs and, and come on. You bishop, why don't you, bishop, like, I've been like, okay, bishop, you believe that. I have her at your house then, bro. You're the one who can find demons and stuff. I don't, I, I can't do that stuff. Like, it won't be for long. And so I, I relented and I was like, okay, 
Actually, you know, this can kind of be fun. Let's just make it it's fun. Let's make it fun, demons. Fun. Come on, demons, we're playing Monopoly. And, and we'll, like, she needs a vacation, so we'll just go take drives up the canyon and stuff like that. And, and it turned into just like a crazy house. The moment she showed up at my house, just the weirdest crap started happening. Lights turning on and off. Said Lights. Sounds of people walking in walls. And, like, sounds like footprints going up. You guys believe this? Do you, are you believing what he's saying right here? Because I don't believe him. I don't believe him. Walls and across. I think he was made to believe it. The, the ceiling. And then, like, Why is it like demons have only followed certain people all the time, right? And it's the people who claim to be the most religious. Stuff floating around, and, and uh, it was just—it was weird, and I hated it. I don't believe you. And I became the resident exorcist. That mm. was the title I came up with myself. I thought it was kind of funny, but it was yeah, it's job. not funny. If <laughs> let's be real, everybody, okay? Like, if you're in your house and this stuff is actually happening, are you like, I'm the resident exorcist? <laughs> Jokes. Like, if it was actually happening to me, I'm like, we're leaving. I'm not in the horror movie. We're like, well, we got to stay. This is our home. We're going to take a stand in our home and then, like, ghosts kill us. Not happening. Okay, I've seen Paranormal Activity. If you guys have never seen Paranormal Activity, watch it. Okay, holy crap. And watch it on loud with a subwoofer so you get the bass tones. I'm just saying. If this was actually happening, you're not just jokey. <laughs> There's a ghost. I'm out. Bye. Okay, it's never happened to me because I don't believe in ghosts, but bye. See you later. Good job. Do I go and give her a lesson? <laughs> Whenever she started to like go into a trance and, and go into possession, and so he's which, you just admitted right there that she was t possessed by the devil. Started to be a lot, and Ruby would. This is fake, by the way. She's faking. This is all performative. Go up and check on her. It started like four every four hours at night, and then it moved every two hours at night, then it moved every hour at night, and then at some point Ruby said, you know what, I'm just going to start sleeping in there. The Long Game by Jody. That's what Jody wanted. Jody wants to sleep with these women. Jody is a lesbian, everybody. It's not been clear. Jody's a lesbian. A 100% lesbian, and she just took a really, really, really long route. To get there, like Mormons will do everything but admit things. Like that's where soaking comes from, by the way. They'll do everything but so they can justify it. Okay? It's so weird. If you're a lesbian, just be a damn lesbian. Okay? You don't have to move into somebody and be like, I'm possessed by the devil to like convince someone to sleep in the same bed with you and do things. Okay? You're just a lesbian. Why ruin other people's families for it? And, and if I need you, I'll come down and get you. Yeah, I'm sure you would. That's kind of weird, but okay. This guy is such a... I'm sorry. You're a pussy, Kevin. No. This is where I'm going to be like, no. No. She's out. Send her over to the bishop's house. She can go sleep at the, in the baptismal tank at the church. I don't care. Okay? No more of this. You're not sleeping in this same bed with somebody. Okay? Sorry. And, and that was that. She's, they started sleeping in the same bed. With your kids in the house! Holy shit, what am I listening to? She started having my like, trances and stuff. I would say probably September, where she believed that she was going to heaven and, and seeing God and Jesus and, and talking with him. And she would get together with Pam Botcher. Ruby Pam Pam Botcher. and Jody would get together and do these interventions. <laughs> Guys. Just wanted literally just to have like. I'm not saying it. Not they, saying so it. They call them, and so they just go up and lock themselves in a room for four or five hours, and then. And where are you parenting your children in all this? They'd come out, and, and they'd all just be on cloud nine, and, and and Ruby would share with me like she had this amazing vision, and, and I wrote it and recorded wrote it, it all down, and. and we have a work to do from God, uh, and, and you're part of it, and, and the bishop's part of it. So this is what he's talking. They're writing. They're trying to write scripture. They're trying to have a movement inside the Mormon church. And we're all part of bringing all this stuff to the world. And so it was, um, and it continued like that until I 
wanted to move on with life. And I would call it dragging my heels. So that was around October. And Jody flipped out because during one intervention, Chad was in the backyard with a bunch of friends. And it was my job to keep all the kids contained in a basement watching movies or playing video games. And I took the dog on a walk and I thought they were done, but they weren't done. And Chad had all his high school friends over in the backyard. Imagine, where's your parents? Oh, they're up having a seance, <laughs> ridding themselves of demons. This is my life. Jody flipped out. She was ready to come back to Ivan's Good. on her own that night. And Ruby and Pam talked her into staying. But that was the first night where Ruby said, I want a separation from you. Well, Kevin made it sound like Ruby wanted a separation because of his corn addiction, right? And so now it sounds like Jody's just like, this is the, again, this is all Jody's long game is to like make it really terrible. I can't believe your husband's not supportive of this. This is a big deal. This is this is a sign from God. And anybody getting in the way of this thing that we have, this mandate from God is a sinner and they're in our way and we need to remove them. And that's it. And these kids were, again, in the way of this mandate from God, so be it, whatever they want to call it, the scripture they're writing, this new world order, or whatever they were writing or doing, they were all in the way. And those kids, and the, the husband had to be removed. And the next was the kids had to be removed. And that's this, I know it's Jody. And Ruby, let this all happen. By the way, if you're so weak-minded... You, like you're to blame and it was an in-home separation and so it was you're already in-home separated um, it was hard basically there were all these rules now placed on me like I could leave when I wanted but I couldn't come back until Ruby gave me permission I invite you to come home but bring me something from Chick-fil-A here it is guys this guy is a pussy, straight up, beta male, and he's in a religion where that's not supposed to be the way it is. This guy just took it and just went along with it? You crazy? No. At this point, you should start, you should, at this point, okay, what we've heard up to this point, I'm like worried for my children, and I'm like, okay, if this is what you want, cool, you can leave. You can go live with her, do what you want. Kids are staying here with me, I don't trust them with you. If you're doing seances and like demon possession, and you're like, yeah, I want my kids to go be with that, no. At this point, you're like, okay, I understand what you want to do, but you're not doing it here, you can get out of here. Peace out. Get a lawyer. Lawyer up. I couldn't come into the kitchen to eat until Ruby gave me permission. <laughs> Again, I'd be like, come into the kitchen, and I'd fart on my way out. In the upstairs where Jody roamed was completely off limits. I couldn't go upstairs anymore in my own house. Um, what the hell? And there would be, Ruby would dictate all of the terms of how our interactions would be when we would talk. And don't forget, this is who Ruby was, and we saw this out of all the content we covered. This, is, this isn't this is just Jody coming in and changing Ruby. That's who Ruby was. Ruby said all this stuff way before Jody came along in many videos years going that we can have document. I have all, I have tons of your passengers videos just sitting in a folder. And if you wanted to go see it, you could see all this. This is who she was. I invite you to give me your phone because you're grounded. I invite you to not eat dinner tonight. I invite you to not and to be starving. Like she would do all this stuff. This is Ruby, everybody. I know Jody had a big part in this later and how it got crazy, but that is who Ruby was. Okay, already. <laughs> Um, and that was hard. And it was during that time that I really became, I would say, dependent upon Ruby. Like, if she said a kind word to me, like, my whole day was made, right? <laughs> Dumbass. And, um, so that separation continued all the way up until... And remember, in the first interview, he's like, the separation happened because of me. I was the one. It was all my fault. And again, what happened with the children? They thought it was all their fault. That doesn't come from Jody. That comes from Ruby. Those kids thought it was their fault, and the, and the and trouble that they were in was their fault all the way up to the end. So that's let's not again. I'm not trying to give Jody too much credit for all the shit that Ruby did because it's not true. Ruby was already doing all this stuff. She was just exacerbated by Jody. The holidays, maybe maybe the last week of December, first week of January. And that's when that big video dropped, by the way, where she did not give her children Christmas. That's when everybody got really, really pissed. She's like, I invited them not to have Christmas with everybody else, and they didn't get anything. Those kids just suffer without Christmas. That was like the last straw for a lot of people, which is crazy, but that's what he's talking about. And he had to go along with it because everybody had to go along with whatever Ruby wanted all the time. Ruby ran the show. And just so you guys are aware, Bonnie Holine is exactly the same way. And then Ruby ended that, that 
that separation. Jody went home this like the second week of January. But by that time, like Ruby, Pam, and Jody were completely de determined to do this work that they felt God had for them. And um, I thought it was crazy. Like, I thought it was just batshit crazy. Like, Ruby. Oh, he swore. I'm telling Jesus. Ruby, you have a reputation. You have a multi million dollar business. You have a brand. And you were just giving it away. She wanted to legally, like, work with Jody's attorney to basically give Jody eight passengers. Holy shite! What? And, um, Jody's, oh my gosh, Jody's like. <laughs> and become an employee. Don't let Jody talk to people at jail. Don't let her start groups or clubs or anything like that. The of connections. So basically the contract was Ruby gives Jody everything and Ruby gets nothing in return. Our manager, um, our YouTube manager at the time was like, um, red flags, red flags. Like, I don't know how to tell you she is scamming you. Yep. Ruby fired him. Fired the manager. Oh my gosh. Oh, Ruby. Ruby doodly doodly, you idiot. I was like, I believe our manager, I think he's right, and Ruby started threatening me with another separation. And so remember, he told you the separation was due to his corn, so he's, he lied at the beginning. Just like, this isn't about money, this is about doing God's work. And, and so what is God's work giving her the channel for? Like, why, why is that God's work? Didn't ask those questions. So we continued in that dynamic for the next six or seven months until she went on a trip with Jody and Pam down to Arizona. And I got to point this out during this whole time. Like, again, there's no possible way that Ruby's parenting her kids properly. They're not being watched. They're not being loved. They're not being parented at all. There's just not happening. And in Ke we know Kevin's a terrible dad because he like left them hanging for like three, three for three for thirteen months, and he and here it is, and he's admitting something right here. He's telling you right now that he thought it was all super wrong what was going on, and he wasn't on board for it, and then just let her take the kids and put them in that situation. That makes it worse. Just so you're aware, he's saying the things. He wasn't aloof to it. He didn't understand. He understood completely, and he's telling you he did. And then he still let those kids be in that environment without using any of his parental rights, legal rights, any of it. Damn. And I think they, like, when I read her journal, it, she went into Mexico or something and bought drugs or something. Bought drugs. Prescription drugs for the emergency kits. And kits. When she came back from that trip, before she even brought the bags into the house, she pulled me in and said, um, I want to talk with you. And that's when she asked me to leave. So your wife comes back from this girl's trip and she's like, I want you to leave. And you're like, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna leave. And then you leave me with the kids and the demon lady. Yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds fair to me. All right. Well, bye. So that to me just makes it, he has so much more like blame. Now listening to this and people, I think he thinks this might exonerate him. <laughs> this makes it worse, dude. You knew everything was wrong. You knew it all was wrong. You knew that Jody was had her hand in this, and it was dangerous, and it was gross, and you just went along with it, and then you left your kids with her for 13 months. You knew from the beginning. 2022. My interactions with Jody at that point became one of... And Jody likely used his past corn addiction or whatever use watching to say, well, that he did that, and so he can't be trusted around, around children. That's probably what she told her. Jody, I was still in the men's group, but... <laughs> Listen to this guy, what he's saying to you. He's like, I was completely thrown away from my family, all this, but I was still in the men's group with connections. The dynamic changed. You think? Instead of being like one of the top people that helped run groups and, and helped support, all of a sudden I was, I felt like I got knocked to the bottom. And Jody was just piling on me every week in the men's groups and the other men how is jody allowed in the men's groups the other men just do whatever jody does if jody piles on somebody they all pile on 
Joey praises somebody, they all praise. And so it, it, it really felt like a, it felt like a, like a pack of dogs. And Joey was the alpha. Well, you're definitely not the alpha. And whoever she, you know, sick the dogs on, they would go. Whoever she praised, the dogs would just lick them up and down. And, and that's how these groups went. And so once I was in separation, every week was just hell, psychological hell. And Jody was running it. Everything was on Zoom. And I knew that the only way I would ever get back into my house was I had to get Jody's approval. So I didn't get Jody's approval, I would never get Ruby's approval. Wow. But it felt like an impossible task because no matter what I did, no matter how like much I tried to track better or be, you know, truthful and, and It sounded like maybe Jody was running out of money and eight passengers was a million dollar venture and she wanted it. Not be selfish uh, every week. It was like you're being manipulated selfish you're lying you're you're hiding something you're still hiding stuff and, and I really started to like question my sanity honestly yeah, it's after all Jody. what you're talking about and so that continued for an entire year but it became more and more and more and more and more isolated until um, you know Jody Jody had an approved list of men that I can make phone calls to. <laughs> See, at this point, you're still human. You get to make choices. At this point, you leave. At this point, you go to a bishop. At this point, you go to the upper echelons of LDS Church, but it sounds like you can't because she's connected higher than he is. It's a professor at BYU, and she's connected higher than he is. Okay, at this point, you got to get in, hey, I need you to know something, that she's completely sinning. There's demons. There's all this stuff, and I don't want my wife there. He didn't do anything. This guy didn't do anything, man. He just took it. Took it on the chin and just kept going. Well, it is what it is. It was basically. What a pussy. I mean, that's the only way to put this guy's a pussy. Three men. But two of those, well, no, all three of those three men were like, we don't want to do phone calls with you anymore because you're being manipulative. And I'm like, well, who told you that? Well, Jody did. So I was completely manipulated. The hell? And I, you know, if I went to my church. Again, if you think about what the Lord, the connections to the Lori Vallow stuff, this is it. They're, they're starting a cult. This is a cult that they're in based on the Mormon religion. Years, I was seeking enablement. And, and she had people. Like she had, like he said, dogs that would she would sick on people. It wasn't just her and Ruby. She had a whole group of people who believed everything she said, would do anything she asked, and would cut off communication and do all this stuff. So that's a cult, everybody. If I went to my family, I was seeking enablement. If I went to anybody, I was seeking enablement. So, seek enablement. I don't care. Your kids are at risk here. And so it just... You do what you, you got. Let's be real. You do what you have to do for the sake of your children. I don't care if you're seeking enablement or living in distortion. If it protects your kids, you do it. Okay? This guy clearly doesn't give a shit about his kids. It felt like a no-win. I felt trapped. And that's where I was all the way up until the last week of July when Jody called me one day out of the blue and just said, How do I get her to wear laundry? I don't understand why you're not getting it. You're not changing. I don't get it. So I've been asking God what to do. And God told me that you need to just to have complete, complete, um, What's the word they would use? Um, solitude with God. Become a monk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, go out and leave us alone. Let us have control of everything. Just go out into the wilderness, is what she's saying. That's what she did. This is her MO, and this happened many. That dude that stood up in front of that camera one day, he's like, this is what she does. And Kevin and him should get together and probably talk about this stuff, but he's also to blame. Okay, because you don't, you just don't. When your kids are involved, you just like, look, I'm putting my foot down. There's a point at, at, in anybody's life where it's too much is too much. And I guess he understands that if he fights her in court, she might get to custody. But uh, you got to fight. Uh, you got to fight. Because now he probably will never see his kids and he doesn't deserve to because he didn't fight for his kids. And I was like, well, what, what do you mean? And she's like, um, I don't want you to come to men's group anymore. And I don't want you to do phone calls with any of the men. 
kind of like, well, then who am I going to talk with? Who, who's going to support me? <laughs> God will. You need to learn to go to God. Oh, okay. And so I'm just like, there's nobody. You're just, I mean, I'm, you're, you're, I'm going to be completely cut off. And she's like, no, you'll have God. And I have your wife and your YouTube channel. So that was the last week of July. And that was my last interaction and contact with Joey. But it was strange because at that time, around that time, things with Ruby started like picking up. And I didn't understand why, but like Ruby wanted to meet in a parking lot and ah. wanted me to sign over titles of documents like the, the two of our cars wanted me to sign them over to her name and this guy's just like yeah no problem <laughs> do what I gotta do dude move on man move on get a divorce get your kids get her get them out of there and to Ruby because Jody wanted it but I was like Okay, you know, I'm just not, uh, I'm, I'm in total compliance mode at this point. Just like, I'm a good husband, you see. No, you're not. You're not a good dad, though. You can trust me. And, and so whatever she asks, like, sign over the, the, the cars to me. No questions. Just okay. And then another thing, she was like, I might want to do an investment, but I will need your signature. Do you trust me enough that co-signing I could get your signature if I wanted to pursue my own investment <laughs> this is where the money comes in this is where the call like makes more sense and that's when she's like that's probably the last time they talked she's like that's why I was asking because I wanted money just in case you weren't ever coming back you boot here's the thing she made, she made it sound like he left and that's what we all thought too but no dude she left crazy craziness what we're listening to Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. This guy's a total douche. Um, how big an she talking about her? Did she tell you? She never did. I, mean, I never signed anything. She never brought anything to me. But when I returned to the house, everything was packed up. And a neighbor came over and said she asked for the HOA rules and, and mentioned to him that she wanted to rent the house out. So she's going to live with Jody, rent the house out for an Airbnb, make a residual income, give it to Jody so she could stay in her whatever, her world or something. I don't know. This is insane. Meanwhile, this guy's living in a box down by the river. I was like, yeah, are you kidding me? And he apparently she wanted to sell the house, but couldn't because my name was on the mortgage. And I think I think that's what she was talking about. Of, Will you sign something if I just put it in front of you? Damn, and he probably would have. And you know what? I probably would have. Oh my gosh. That's how messed up I was. I'm glad you didn't. Me too. <laughs> that would have been disastrous. But I can't describe Cults. to you what torture and hell it was to live an entire, it was more than a month really, in complete isolation believing that I was like evil and I mean manipulative and lying and selfish and I that I had abandoned my family dude you did abandon your family that one's true you might not you might have been manipulated and lied to those things maybe not be you but you abandon your family you absolutely abandon your family and that I was more interested in my selfishness than no, you were more interested in your wife than protecting your kids. So I'll give like, but you're wrong. You were, you were totally wrong. I think moving forward, you going through that is going to be extremely helpful. I felt that way. Because a lot of those are the same words that were used with them, and you're going to understand how they felt, you know. We've already talked about yeah. that, actually. A couple of times we've met, I've said, this is how I felt. Did you feel that way? Yes, this is how I felt. Like when we each confess to things that we didn't do, I'm like, I confess to things I never did. But I 
was so scared. And he's like, that's what I did too. So we connected on that. I think he's talking about another guy. Oh, you know. And, and it's crazy that anybody could get to that level of desperation, but we were there. We were there. Oh. This is the uh, end of July, we were saying. End of July of 2022. Or the last time we saw Jody was. 23. 22. Okay. The last communication I had with Jody was uh, the last week of July. It might have been like the first couple of days of August, which is so just shortly before we made contact with you. Yeah. Where you made contact with us. A month before. Yeah. I don't know who this lady is. So for that whole month, my life was literally wake up, exercise, go to work, pretend everything's okay, come home to connections like workbooks and read scriptures and try to strip selfishness out of my life. Like, go to bed, wake up, repeat every day. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, I was so upside down. And my plan was in six months, I get to reach back out to Jody. Six and, months without your kids? No. And, and she'll let me back in the group, and then I can prove. Oh, I don't know if I heard a door or knock, but it's going to be Might be kids. Might be. <laughs> so he's get to meet his, he might get to see his kids right now. That's why he came in and did this. Oh. And we can. Has it been an hour? Almost. I told you it wouldn't take an hour. I'm sorry. That sounds like Sherry out there. We're good too if you need to head out. That was seriously. Was we just wanted, yeah. The only question I would have, just going back, you said that she was having like these visions of like what's it were. Did we ever privy enough to understand or be told what those visions were? A couple of them. What, what were the two that they she was talking about? So, like one of them, she would was walking along the beach with Jesus and Jesus challenged her to go to walk on the water mm -hmm. and it was a whole lesson on walking on the water. Another That's <laughs> just talking about Peter in the Bible. <laughs> She's taking stories from the Bible making them I was Peter. She would walk with Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. There's no Heavenly Mother. And she learned about she had a pet lion in heaven. Named Charles, I, I, I would like a pet lion named Charles in heaven too. How do we get to sign up for one of those? Pet lion, fuck off. You kidding me? I don't know why I never forgot that name, but, <laughs> but it was like this massive lion and she got to ride the lion and, and learned that, you know, all about. It's not biblical at all. As soon as someone has a vision of something that's like clearly so not biblical, you're like, okay, well, that's not a vision from the Bible or God. You're not going to get a lion to ride on. Could happen. Who she was and this pet lion and all. There was another one where there was a lot of satanic ones where um, when she would go into possession mode, she would talk in like different voices. Again, it sounds like she had multiple personality disorder. It was really creepy. But the voices would say, she's ours, we're not letting go. She is Satan's bride. I believe that one, though. Um, she's mine. I'm going to marry her. You sure? <laughs> you sure? You know, so, if she was faking it, she believed that she was trying to, or, or Satan wanted her as her bride. Jody Hildebrandt? Again, that's zero biblical to that. If you're someone who loves Jesus and you're claiming to be a Jesus lover, Satan does not want to bribe you. Okay, let's, let's be real. So then you said, well, just clarifying, so the last time you saw the kids was when you separated that jolt in July. Is that what thinking? The 2022. He's nodding, yes. Do you have any questions for us? No, I'm just really interested in the pen papers. Like, for my own curiosity, I want to know what was going on and all of those little interventions. And I'll look back through the photos because, like I said, we documented everything in the home, whether we took it or 
if we didn't. And then I'll reach out to Mr. Kester when they, you know. So but, a couple of observations from your time. Yeah, go for it. So I, I always thought it was interesting, now that you mentioned that she was riding a lion, Kevin told me that when they were having these group meetings, she would never show up. She would show up on the WebEx, but in place of her person, would just be this X for the connection. So it's like this Wizard of Oz thing going on. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that she never kind of showed her face. Kind of she she yeah. always covered herself. Yeah. Like even in the hottest of summer, she would wear these hoodies. She would smell so bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She would never bathe. <laughs> but she was trying to hide her arms and stuff because apparently Ruby told me they were just like. So this person is just like a tortured person who didn't want to like just take medicine. <laughs> so the other thing that I think it's important for them to know is during that whole time when you were out, <coughs> you had communication with Ruby maybe three or four times, but yeah. each time, or at least on some of the occasions you spoke to her, she's telling you that everything's blissful, we're doing well, you know, everything's so much better without you. And oh, well, that would be communicated to me by Jody every week. So he, th there is communication with Jody through the men's group and at the men's group. The men's groups too, and it was just like you're abandoning your family. You're and, and it all you did always hurt so bad. Did you mean like okay? Well, I don't want to abandon my family. I want my family back in my life right now at this moment. I don't want to abandon them. Like all you have to say is words. Use words. You're a professor, man. It's like, you claim to be a smart guy. I want to be with my family so bad. What do you mean I'm abandoning? If you wanted to be with your family, you would change. You would stop being selfish. You would. But you what do they think this guy was doing? Smell, selling meth out of his basement? It. And it was just felt like, well, how do I stop wanting it then? It's like, then you must change. Well, how do I change? Well, you gotta want it. Well, how, what? You know. That's cult. So how do I want it? You gotta change. It's this like perpetual cycle. Yeah, there's no, what is it? I tried to find my way into that cycle and, and it felt like, have you ever had a dream where there's like a problem you're trying to solve but you can't solve it and how frustrating you feel? That's what my life felt like. And as I'm looking back, I'm realizing there was no solution. Yeah, there was a solution. You had a lot of legal solutions. You had a lot of biblical solutions. You had your church that was there. You just didn't do any of it. Okay, sorry. You didn't do any of it. You had you had tons of solutions. You didn't exercise any of them. It was... There Call was, the police. You either had Jody's approval or... You, you didn't need... Who, who cares about Jody's approval? Call the police. Call a lawyer and say, I want custody of my children. File for divorce. Get custody of your children. Sorry, at this point, you're it's too late. It's done. There, I wasn't doing anything different than the other men in the group. But they got her approval, so they were praised, and they were repenting, and they were doing everything right. I, on the other hand, was manipulative and selfish and enabling, and all blah, 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 blah. And she became like the arbiter of, of truth. Cult. The arbiter of forgiveness. Cult. God's own mouthpiece. Cult. It, it was just nice. And how can you let this woman be God's own mouthpiece when in your religion, that's just, that's absolutely verboten. You can't. She, she cannot be God's mouthpiece. It is impossible in your religion for her to have any of that type of power over any men. I'm sorry. I know people can be like, well, I'm upset about that. You should be. I'm just saying the truth of it. She didn't have any of that power. And this guy understands the Bible. He's probably read it a million times, understands the Book of Mormon. He's probably a card carrying. He's a professor at BYU. He knows the rules, man. All he has to say is like, nope. No, you're not. Here's the scripture. Well, I'm glad that you're seeing clearly, you know. He's not. Um, and I came out of it. No, so. no. Still a bad dad. Yeah. One last mm -hmm. discussion. So, in the home, when the warrant was issued, there was a bag with $85,000 cash in yes. it. And I understand her lawyer, Ruby's lawyer, has all that. Probably put it in his bank account. I'm not... Which home are we talking about? Ivan. In Ivan's, in Ivan's home. We, we don't know. We, the money was left where it was left. We didn't take yeah. it. We didn't, we didn't take it. We left. We're assuming... That uh, Lamar Winward 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really true, but, but we don't. I can't tell you. Yeah. One way or the other. So here's kind of the issue. That money, she cleaned out their bank accounts. Kids, Kids savings. savings. Wow. Yes. And yours too, your joint account. Yeah. And that's where that money came from. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can have or if I need to have a discussion with the county attorney. Kevin would kind of like his kids' money back. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but Kevin's going to put his pocket. It would be civilly, so I would go address uh, that. Talk to Lamar. I think this is Kevin's lawyer talking. Lamar, yeah. Lamar, yeah. I don't think he wants to give them up. And I wouldn't either. If yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I think he's using them for attorney fees. Yeah. Um, yep, cash. The county attorney is going to be able to separate. You should be, I think that Kevin should be able to sue that attorney on behalf of his children. Kevin should get everything to his children. He should walk away and go live in absolute outer darkness himself because he's a failure. His kids should get the house. His kids should get everything. And he should just walk away and let them have a normal life. Uh, Alice and Jones just already separated out. Even the county attorney's going to look at it and go, it's, uh, it's civil. It's both your guys' money in some sense. And, it's both your money. But if you to, did. The judge would have to divide that up to where it goes. We can do that. He's a county attorney one. If you did go civil, though, I feel like that would be your fastest. Laura could just claim that it's her channel. She made all the money. Most of it's hers, and the cut is like 10% to Gavin. Grab to... It's just dirty how she did. Yeah. No. She stole yeah. money. She stole money from my 18-year-old son out there. Yeah. And it's wrong. Well, the other thing that you did, that I don't know, I mean, there's a lot there. And this is why he tried to sue her estate for the house, right? Because he wants that money. He wants it. But I think they need to know that while Jody was living in your home, she was also purportedly giving therapy to Chad, and Chad was paying her. And he's like, what, at that time, 15, we were 16? paying her. Oh, okay. It wasn't until Chad moved out that part of his therapy was he needed to. He needed to pay for his own therapy. Oh my gosh! Oh my so gosh! At age seventeen, he was paying her nine hundred dollars a month to get brainwashed. At a seventeen, he did. What, what was he doing for work? He worked at um, at a, you know, lifeguard, basically. They made their son work, even though he was owed hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, from the channel. They made him still go work and pay Jody his hard-earned money to get. To get brainwashed by Jody. That's Kevin. Like I don't know if you're hearing this, but it makes you sound worse. Okay. Lifeguard supervisor at two different rec centers. So it was like the majority of his check was going to Jody. Wow. He was paying her more than he's paying rent, wasn't he? So. Three times as much. They were charging him rent. What? They were charging him rent, or was he living on his own? Okay. That's crazy. Her so I mean, obviously you see her house. And what she has, she's making there's a lot of money going around. There's a lot of money. I don't know if we can sorry, I we'll say, I'm not sure if we know where that money came from or where it went. Like it doesn't seem like she's had me come within the past little bit. So I, I want to uh, cooperate though on anything related to Jody and Anyway, he's basically just like, I want to keep throwing Jody under the bus. How about throwing Ruby under the bus? Ruby, Ruby uh, deserves to be thrown under the bus, too. So you can piss right off, butthole. You're a jerk, and nobody likes you, Kevin. So that interview was quite crazy. Kevin is finally waking up to it all. He trusted her two days before this, and now all of a sudden she's the worst devil on earth, and she is. And we all know that. Um, but that doesn't give him a free pass to be a bad dad. He had lots of avenues, and don't ever listen to him to be like, well, no, no, no. And you could say, well, he was manipulated and all that stuff. That's true. Sure, but no excuse. There is no excuse for what he did. None. You fight for your kids, file for divorce, use your, use your rights. You know, you, at least you're going to get some rights. And she's like, was she going to go to court and say he looked at porn? So the judge could be like, okay. <laughs> like, he's stupid. To be manipulated to that degree is craziness. You are, you are to blame for some of that. So, and your kids are the ones who suffered for it. So I don't care. This interview is crazy, though, with the freaking plates flying off and the demons and everything else. Almost believe that kind of stuff when you see what happened to these kids. I mean, that has to be demonic, right? That's that's psychopathic and demonic. So, 
What are your thoughts on that interview? That was quite crazy, quite eye-opening. Uh, we're going to talk about the other conversations. I think she had a conversation with Julia. I don't know if she had a conversation with Bonnie, but I'm going to keep looking through all the stuff, and we're going to look at those channels and see what's happened and see what the Griffiths are doing currently because they're still supporting her, which is insane to me. So everybody, take a deep breath. <sighs> wow. This stuff just keeps getting crazy, and these other people, and there's all these other people involved, and they're probably hoping not to get dragged into this, but too late! Too late. You bunch of a-holes. Please protect your kids. Don't watch this garbage. This is ultimately where it's going to all end up. Kids are going to, like, not have anything to show for it in the end, except for being abused their entire lives. So, it's up to you to watch it or not, but I would suggest you don't, because you are enabling it. Okay? Thanks for being here. Thanks for being amazing, and I will see you when I see you.